Hi, I'm Chris James, uh, writer, creator of Sons of Chaos, which is known in Greece as 1821 Children of the Revolution. Uh, and I'm here to do a cross the world interview with you. Being done with the book was amazing, and getting to go out in public in the world was amazing, uh, and also vulnerable because you don't know how people are going to respond. Um, it, everything was good, going to all the Comic-Cons and traveling throughout the U.S. And, and the rest of Europe, but the only thing that really mattered is how it was received in Greece. Uh, when, you, when you write about another culture and, and someone else's history uh, as a foreigner, it's a vulnerable thing, and, and I think I was afraid often that the Greeks would be more judgmental about m m what I did. Uh, and after coming and seeing how supportive everyone was and how uh, nurturing and appreciative they were about what I did, uh, it, it made me actually relax, finally, for a minute. Um, <laughs> kind of the highlight of, of the whole year was was definitely coming to Greece and, and bringing the book to AthensCon, uh, where the reception was so massive and amazing, uh, and I met so many great people who have come on to become my friends now. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better reward than that uh, after 10 years of pain and isolation <laughs> and researching all of this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's, I'm very appreciative of everything that's happened so far. So, uh, it's been a long trip, is how it's been. Um, uh, I think uh, it was amazing and a wonderful experience in so many ways, but also grueling in so many ways. I think what, what began as some conversations with a friend, which then rolled into the concept of making a screenplay for a film, which rolled into making a book, which rolled into making a graphic novel, and then the time that, that it takes to, to build every piece of art for 200 pages of book after you've done the research and built it. You know, it's a long process. So the trip was insane and, and amazing and painful um, <laughs> and, and rewarding. And... Uh, so, you know, it's also still at the beginning stages. The, the book has really just created a platform that now you can jump off in so many different directions in so many different ways for so many different projects that are related to the book. Uh, so, so the trip has been fun, but uh, I think it's still got a long way to go. I think we're still in the early stages of the book's conception uh, so for better or worse, I think there's 10 plus more years that I will be surrounded with this content. Yeah, it's true. Um, especially as an American, you, you grew up with a, a handful of cliches that represent Greece. You, when you're young, you have the Greek gods, mythology, clash of the titans. Um, you, you know, you you then as you get older, Greece becomes a, a place to go for debauchery and drinking and party and sex, and so it's it's not very representative of the reality of the history and the culture and the country. Um, initially, I I didn't know that much about this revolution. It was it was introduced to me to my best Greek friend uh, Nick Lambro who knew I was a filmmaker and writer and, and kept pushing it on me saying, something needs to be made about this, you know, check it out. And finally, over time, I started to check it out and I read uh, some stories about it. And initially what happened is some of these events had such a, a cinematic uh, resonance just based on the, the actual events. So, you, you know, if you think of the Dance of Zalongo uh, or the Battle of Gravia or, you know, battles at sea there's so many things that already feel like a movie so these images started to come alive in my head and then i got deeper into the research until one day i was imagining the sullyots uh <laughs> battling and i realized i had this very cartoon-like image of the reality and and it was very 
very surface layered. And and I thought for a minute, I'm just seeing this as like a, a, a show uh, as opposed to a reality. And something happened in this moment where I all of a sudden felt myself in the midst of a Sullyat village and came upon the concept of the reality of, of how far we've come in such a short period of time and how just a minute ago in our past, we were living like this, where every day you could wake up and not know who in your family might die today or who you might murder today just as a part of your normal life. And that sort of hit me and then it took me further uh, until I was so deeply entwined within this <laughs> revolution that I started feeling the experience of many, many of the different uh, events and, and battles. And and that just kind of conclude, came to a, a point where I thought, wow, I don't know of any other event in modern history that best exemplifies the power of, of people coming together, uh, the power of unification uh, for a purpose and what it's capable of. And if you track that back through Greek history, it there's something in the Greek DNA that uh, has this magic capacity to, to make impossible things happen. Uh, you know, when Greeks are pushed up against the wall, uh, they don't, they don't uh, fuck around. Uh, and so I think this is the, the, the most current thing in, in our, in our recent past that, that exemplifies some of these uh, elements. Universal message is kind of like what I said. It's the it's the power of unification. It's the the being faced w with an obstacle that just seems impossible. Like there's no way you should be able to overcome this. And th this is true. Like a small nation should not be able to up <laughs> to uproot <laughs> an empire, uh, but they did. And, and this is, you know, it, it's like when things go bad, we seem to have the power to pull together uh, and work together to overcome a larger obstacle for the greater good. Uh, unfortunately, we tend to fight each other all the rest of the time until there's a, a unifying obstacle. And I think if we could figure out how to do this together on a regular basis, we'd, you know, be better people living a better life. Um, but yeah, so just you know, I think the other universal message that that I came to was uh, was we sort of um, we turn the ideology or, or the idea of people from history into these um, kind of um, iconic images of of heroes, as opposed to realizing that it's just. Um, just a, a person in a circumstance, and that person is pushed to the level that they 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 find something in themselves to stand up in a different way to take care of their people or their loved ones or their family. You know, the the idea of patriotism for a country is a good idea, but but you won't do that unless you are taking care of people that you care about. And so I think it starts there. And once I started stepping inside the the minds of of these guys that all of a sudden were faced with these sort of superhuman circumstances and managed to rise it made me look into the the people and try to imagine being one of these guys uh in this circumstance and think how would i stand up to something like this and and trying to humanize the reality of it uh, i think we can gain much more from history and and events of the past, if we humanize it instead of seeing it as this factual, uh, flat uh, series of events and see the humans as actual people. Yes, I did f so much reading of books about, I, I read every book I could find. And you know, you have to really dig to find these books in English. Uh, much, most of them are written in Greek. So the problem is, is what happens when you start reading the books is you, you get to book two and it sounds great, and book three and it's like, wow. But by the time you get to book five, six, seven, ten, 10 and above, the books start conflicting and the information doesn't add up. And 
this book says one thing that's the opposite of this book. And so you realize, oh no, uh, history books are really fiction based on the writer. So what happens is you have to read every piece of information you can and keep logs and charts. And I had a wall filled with all of these, this information and, and books made of each character. And it's like investigative reporting. So you start to put pieces together and then you have to break down and understand the authors and who wrote it and what their bias was and what their agenda was and what their relationship to the revolution was so that you could decipher their agenda to figure out what might have been true of with what they're saying or what wasn't true. And you do that enough times with a hundred different books and you start to have an idea of what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it's a lot of, of reading between the lines and Hypoth hy hypothesizing about what might have been real as opposed to the bullshit that's presented in most books. The interesting thing about he and I is we met one time for 15 minutes in person. He lives in Argentina and I live in Los Angeles and we mapped this 200 page book uh, completely apart uh, over, you know, over the internet. So uh, all of our communication and our, and our working through story elements and mapping out pages was through Skype primarily. And uh, the irony to make it even more challenging is that he speaks Spanish and I speak English and we both speak a little bit of the other's language, but not very well. So the start, start was a little bit slower but once he really understand, understood the story and the themes and the character and the layers of it, he, he barely needed my help at all. Uh, and, and what he brought to the book was a new level of magic that uh, wouldn't have even come near existing uh, if I was left alone to do it. So I'm very grateful for what he brought. Yes. <laughs> yes, there, there, there's a lot currently in development, uh, other projects that stem from Sons of Chaos uh, that have been growing over the past year, um, including a, a possible limited TV series or an animated series. Um, but outside of that, what the book has done is it's uh, stimulated a, a number of other projects. So right now I'm trying to move forward developing a project around Zalongo, uh, as well as a documentary series where I travel to a lot of the cities that were key cities during the revolution that have kind of gone invisible and how the people have evolved uh, during the past centuries. Um, as well as uh, a series of master classes about uh, humanizing modern history, uh, using the book as, a, as sort of a starting off point to teach these elements um, everywhere, but primarily in Greece. Uh, so, so yeah, there's a number of things uh, and, and things keep popping up and people keep reaching out about possible spin-off different things that have to do with the book. So yeah, I think there's probably a lot more to come, and this is just the beginning stages of this sort of saga. I think like all of us, the pandemic has completely altered the trajectory of the timeline that we were working on. Uh, initially, I was set to be in Greece uh, from March through June. Uh, speaking engagements, teaching master classes at Aristotle University, a bunch of things that unfortunately are, didn't happen. And then supposed to go to Austria to work on a sitcom there and so forth and so on. So uh, all of our plans have changed. Uh, what happened with me was um, once I realized the plans were all going to go away, uh, I quickly reached out to uh, an organization run by Sean Penn. Uh, and it's called CORE. And what we did is... Uh, we initiated all of the beginning uh, drive-through COVID uh, test sites. So, so that took all of my time for the first few months and kept my sanity somewhat intact uh, while we were figuring out how to make things happen here. As that progressed and things got settled, then I started working on building protocols for how to work safely 
uh, while shooting movies and TV shows. So did that for a little while. And then recently I just finished directing a TV movie thriller for <laughs> the Lifetime channel and while also developing a few other things, like just hoping we can all get back to life quick and I can come back to Greece and we can hang out and I can have a proper experience in Greece because I've never yet been there during the summer. I've only been there when it's cold. So I'm hoping we could change that soon. Uh, otherwise, I think that's the last of the questions, but feel free to reach out if you have any more. Thank you so much. I hope this was okay. I know it's not easy to interact, but thanks for wanting to talk to me and uh, hopefully we talk again soon.